Hi everyone, I'm Ben here. I'm back again. So yeah, just a couple, just a couple of hours ago, I saw the Rise of Skywalker in theaters, which I probably shouldn't have done, but I did anyway. So fuck you. Hmm. Um, and then I made a quick seven-minute video covering my thoughts on the movie, but because my phone has so such, such low memory space, I wasn't really able to articulate my thoughts fully. And also, I was still kind of processing it. So I took a bath, brushed my teeth, and all that, and now I'm thinking about it more. And, um, you know, it's funny, I just saw this movie a couple of hours ago, and the novelty is already starting to wear off. Like, it was certainly quite the spectacle, visually, and musically for that matter. And it was certainly a well-acted film. But the writing was just really, really bad. You know what this movie was? It was a fan fiction. And to be fair, that's what I've always seen the sequel trilogy as, but this felt the most fan fiction-y of all three of them, which is saying a lot, considering how much of a fan fiction The Force Awakens felt like. <sighs> so, yeah. But that's not to say it's not completely without th without things to praise, but <sighs> I'm realizing quickly it was a pretty bad movie. With that said, though, I will um, say there were a couple things that I did like, and something a lot of things I did not like. So I'm just going to... This is just going to be a short ramble about things I did and didn't like about the movie. So, first and foremost, Palpatine coming back was clearly desperate fan wank. And like I said right from the start, it robs Anakin's sacrifice in Return of a Jedi of all its importance. But with that... And so, yes, he should not have been brought back at all. And again, this just screams fan fiction. But at the same time, I'm not as pissed at it as I, sh as I would be because there was some precedence to Rey defeating him defeating him rather than just Mary suing him to death because, because power... <sighs> there was some precedence of there being every Jedi ever backing her, which was honestly kind of cool, if I'm being, if, if I'm saying, honestly. Yes, it was desperate fan service, but you know, you hear Anakin, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Yoda, Mace Windu, and I'm sure others that I didn't catch. Like, I think, I, I, I swear I might have heard Ava Sakura's voice. How random. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was kind of precedented. Ray and Palpatine there being the embodiment of all the Jedi and all the Sith. That was, that was very fan fiction -y, but still cool to see. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, let me see. Let's see here. Um, so, Ray can heal people with the Force now. Yeah, why not? <sighs> um, it was kind of cool to see more of Poe's backstory, learning that he used to be a smuggler. And more first order first first order deserters. That was cool, I guess. And you know, I even kinda I kinda like the parallel and contrast with their desertion and Finn's. Um, yeah. So okay. Making Ray Palpatine's granddaughter is actually a very clever way of working around the retarded explanation in The Last Jedi, and it also kind of explains why she's so damn powerful. It's also kind of cool how they tied this tied this whole thing directly back into the vision she had in The Force Awakens with her seeing the same spaceship, but it still feels really forced. Honestly. Right from the start, I felt like no matter what Ray's backstory was going to be, she would just feel like a really bad OC. And it, she kind of is. <sighs> but still. Look, Daisy Ridley is a lovely woman, and she does a decent job with this material, but Ray is a terrible character, no matter what, no matter which way you look at it. <sighs> um, okay, one thing I really didn't think was going to happen was Han Solo's cameo. Yeah, who would have thought? I'm shocked Harrison Ford agreed to even be in this movie. But yeah, it was a cool, it was a nice scene. It, it, okay, now it wasn't actually his ghost; it was Kylo Ren imagining him. But it was a cool scene. It actually served as a great parallel to his death. Like he touched Kylo's face in exactly the same spot, and Kylo even said the same line of "I don't know, what, I don't know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it." But instead of, but instead of, you know, I I was sure the scene was going to end with Kylo stabbing the apparition in the same way he stabbed Han, but no, it was a nice contrast. It was a, it was actually it was a very nice scene, and even though Harrison Ford clearly didn't want to be there, he was at least trying, I guess. Um, yeah, there you know there were actually a number of other really cool parallels to The Force Awakens in this movie, most notably showing the very same shot from the original Force Awakens teaser back in November two thousand fourteen. That was honestly kind of awesome. And also having Ray slide down a sand slope on a scrap of me on some scrap metal. That was a nice parallel showing how far she's come. Except she hasn't really come anywhere. She feels like exactly the same person. <sighs> oh, okay, answer me this. Was I supposed to give a fuck when Snap Wexley died? He was... Okay, so... I, I guess not. But it was treated like a really heart-wrenching moment. But I don't know. We barely even knew the guy. He was in, what, one scene in The Force Awakens? And then not in The Last Jedi at all? And then just here... Um, so, yeah. Oh, okay, here's something kind of strange. So, no, wait, no, I still said that in my original video. Fuck, okay. 
Oh yeah, uh, Wedge Antilles has a two-second cameo in this movie. I barely even caught it. Hell, I didn't even realize it was him until a few seconds afterwards. But yeah, Dennis Lawson actually shows up for like, for five seconds in this movie. Why? You know, it's funny. They offered to give him a cameo in The Force Awakens, but Lawson said no because he felt it would be completely forced and, un forced and unnecessary. And he was right. So why did he suddenly buckle and come here? Mm, it was... It was completely jarring and out of place. I like Wedge as much as the next guy, but he should not have been shown, been shown at all. Oh, and also, the five-second shots of Cloud City and Endor were just even more fan-pandering bullshit. <sighs> um, uh, so... I guess Raylo is officially kind of a thing, because they kissed at the very end, which was... weird, and kind of pretty forced, if I'm being honest. Um... But it still happened, and I guess the force healing thing was used kind of cool, but Kylo sacrificing himself for Rey. You know, honestly... Uh, sorry, okay. Hang on. Now, two more things. Am I crazy, or were they trying to imply that the black girlfriend worked with whose name escapes me was Lando's daughter? What? Oh, okay. What, fuck. Three more things. So, this is now the second time that I thought Finn was going to sacrifice himself, and then he didn't. At least, uh, yeah, like, I thought he was going to go up with the Star Destroyer, but no, he didn't. How strange. I don't know, at least this time the, um, the rescue didn't ruin everything. Oh, yeah, uh, randomly, Captain Phasma isn't in this movie at all, which is good, because she should not have been. <sighs> complete waste, a complete and utter waste of a character. Okay, so the ending scene at the Lars homestead was blatant fan wank, and honestly just really, really just irritated me. Shouldn't have... Oh, okay, fuck. Okay, backtracking a little. So, retconning it so that Leia was training to be a Jedi this whole time was too little too late. We should have seen that in The Force Awakens and or The Last Jedi, and I do not mean the fucking Leia Poppins scene. But yeah, no, they, they retcon it so that Leia was training to be a Jedi, but then suddenly gave up her lightsaber or some shit. The de-aging CGI on Hamill and Fisher in that flashback scene was pretty damn good. But it feels like it was just forced in there because people were wondering, wait, why isn't Leia using the Force more? <sighs> it's weird. Super weird. Um, that's all I have for the time being. It's funny, I was really swept up in the action when I was watching this movie in theaters, but the, now that I'm stepping back and thinking about it, it's really, really, really bad. But... <sighs> I didn't hate absolutely every fucking second of it, like I did with The Last Jedi, so it does have that going for it. I definitely had fun at the theater, and I'll probably rent the Blu-ray or something, but I definitely have no desire to see this movie again anytime soon. On the whole, the sequel trilogy just feels like a really, really bad fanfiction that robbed the original trilogy of any emotional impact it might have had. I wish it didn't exist, but it does. And when you look at the three movies back-to-back, -back, they just feel like it's just a disjointed mess. Like, I know everyone hates the prequel trilogy, but at least it feels like one coherent story. This does not. <sighs> okay, I'm, I've just been rambling this whole time. I don't have anything else to say. <sighs> I can't say I was disappointed because I had no expectations whatsoever. But it was still bad.